Denial is a hell of a thing. There are people that actually deny cancel culture exists. Others believe that Antifa isn't really a thing, but merely a myth or a set of ideas. After all, those fires didn't exactly start themselves. Some believe that being woke isn't really a movement, but more of a state of social enlightenment, and those people are what you would normally call brain dead, or differently challenged, I should say. I've noticed that there is a movement going on in our culture right now, spearheaded by the new left, operating and acting exactly the way a cult would. And when I say cult, I'm talking about the textbook examples of what constitutes a cult, religious or non-theistic. I'm talking about cults in terms of Nexium, Scientology, Heaven's Gate, the Manson Family, the People's Temple, the New Left. So yes, if you currently consider yourself to be a member of the woke, congratulations, you are in a cult. All right, let's cut to the chase. I've been reading a bunch about cults. <sighs> about cult research and the key components to cultish behavior, the woke mob hits on every single characteristic in glorious detail. This is impressive because if you were going to diagnose a sociopath, the person would have to hit on several of the key characteristics and not every single one, just most of them. The woke cult hits every single attribute to be considered a cult with pinpoint accuracy. According to cult research, concerted efforts at influence and control lie at the core of cultic groups, programs, and relationships. Members of cults are unaware or not fully aware of the extent to which members may be manipulated or abused. So let's go over some of the key tenets at what constitutes a cult with some examples of the woke slash left behavior. Number one, the group displays an excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader and regards the belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth as law. Let's be clear, woke is a term that hints at elitism because it insinuates that some people have a higher degree of consciousness or intellectual depth about the world around them. The leadership in woke can be quite broad. The movement is based more on the ideology more than a specific person. Since the left eat their own, leaders come and go as the criteria for being woke ever expands. We see people like DeRay Mickison, Ibram X. Kennedy, and Robin D'Angelo making their living off of promoting woke culture. D'Angelo alone will request an excess of $13,000 just for a pre-recorded speaking fee. I've seen reports of her charging around $30,000 for speaking fees. These are reports that I've seen. Anytime you push back or go against what is considered woke culture, there is a disproportionate response from the left. This is the excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment on their end. They believe to be on the side of angels, so all of their actions are considered and held as righteous. Context doesn't matter to them. Intent doesn't matter to them either. If a person is caught saying a word that shouldn't have been said, dressed in a way that is deemed to be culturally appropriated or question the motives of the woke mob, they get swift action from the left. This disproportionate over-the-top reaction is key to not only their identity, but their effectiveness. It's akin to this. If you're walking down the street and someone steps on your foot, a reasonable person would call out the action. And if an apology is issued, then the apology is acknowledged, accepted, and both parties move on with their lives. In woke culture, if you step on someone's foot, you get doxxed, your employer is harassed until you get fired, your livelihood is ruined, your family is harassed, your house is vandalized, death threats are issued, and bombs or bomb threats are sent in the mail. That's the crux of cancel culture. And cancel culture and woke culture are intimately intertwined. And this non-theistic religion being woke is the denomination, while canceling is the mission and the practice. The woke respond disproportionately and irrationally to what they deem to be the immutable truth of their cause. The woke mob break the third law of motion in the societal contract. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, except if it's against their dogma, in which case every action has an overblown and bloated reaction. Their overzealous reactionary tactics are childish at best and terrorist bent at worst. We see Scientologists act the same way 
whenever someone dares to criticize their organization. Scientology is a cult, and the woke is a cult. Two, questioning, doubt, or dissent are discouraged or even punished. There have been numerous people fired from their jobs because they refused to take part in racial sensitivity training. Can you believe that? People didn't want to sit through a seminar of an overpaid windbag to tell them that they are evil just because they have a certain skin color. Cisco recently fired employees after a seminar where they were asked to complete a questionnaire on race issues. Now, it was supposed to be an anonymous questionnaire, but the employer went through all of these questionnaires, uh, the employees, and found the ones that didn't mark fully agree on race-related issues, and then they fired them. This isn't the only company that has done this. We live in a time where data, statistics, and facts are readily available to all of us. Despite the fact that there is a mountain of statistical evidence that debunks the vast majority of what the woke claim, they don't care. There's no discussion, they have co-opted the conversation, and any resistance will be met with disproportionate force. Questioning the woke is met with swift repercussions because it is, in fact, a cult. Three, mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, or debilitating work routines are used in excess and serve to suppress doubt about the group and its leaders or leader. The media has made it their life's work now to push a narrative to support woke ideology. It doesn't matter if they have to selectively edit 911 calls or reframe the story. Their agenda will be pushed on the public. They decide what is uh, important for you to know. When Michael Brown was shot for trying to fight a police officer and take his weapon, the media ran with the hands up, don't shoot angle, despite having no credible evidence to support it. This hands up, don't shoot mantra has been thoroughly debunked over all the years. He never said it and it did not happen. However, to this day, people still chant this mantra at protests as if it actually occurred. There have been t-shirts made with a quote as if it were some type of new slogan. The use of the human megaphone tactic is also employed quite heavily at woke protest rallies. This is when one self-important person stands up, says a little catchphrase, and the entire surrounding mob of people repeat that same catchphrase. They act like actual megaphones don't really exist. Really, what they're doing is practicing and brainwashing, repeating slogans and nonsense as part of a crowd to gain some sort of solidarity through groupthink. We see whenever there is a march, chanting and mantras are typically used. They say the same lines over and over again, instead of drilling the statement into their own heads. In Minnesota, chants from Black Lives Matter protesters are drawing disgust from police. The protesters took to the streets Saturday in St. Paul outside of the state fair, yelling, quote, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, end quote. How many times has the media put out false information to the public had it been debunked and the media never goes back on it for correction. The belief that Jacob Blake wasn't going for a knife and was unarmed is still being repeated even though that was proven to be untrue. We see it over and over again. The media gets ahead of the story, reports something that is not true, and it sticks in the public's mind. They'll see it over and over again as if they want to force it to be true. Okay, so here's, uh, here is the beginning uh, of much of the video that all of you have seen. Okay, so this is Jacob Blake as he begins to circle around the car. Officers are now keeping their distance. They're at gunpoint. And that's because officers have told us and DCI that they all at that point had seen him with a knife. And so they are keeping their distance in accordance with their training. And I believe Noble Ray will talk about that briefly with you as well. So at this point, I don't think you can see the knife. He walks around the vehicle, and you may have seen it there. This is an enhanced video, DCI doing the maximum they can do. There's a glimpse of the knife. The far left is that knife uh, in his hand. Jacob Blake admits that. Jacob Blake admits to DCI that he had a knife in his hand, and that's what that is. It's not a cell phone. It's nothing else. He admits it. The knife itself is pictured there. It's a razor blade uh, uh, type knife. Uh, and then we had DCI, a, uh, a, a, a analyst, take the shape of the knife and the size and match it to the picture to see if, in fact, it fit size and shape, and, in fact, it is a match. So we say with confidence, based on Blake's admission, based on all the officers saying it, 
and this video evidence, he clearly is armed with a knife as he walks around and approaches the driver's door. How many times did the media run with the false narrative that Donald Trump was referring to white nationalists as part of the very fine people clip? It's been debunked over and over again, but people still use that segment to justify calling him a racist. The media is part of the woke mob and the repetition of lies to brainwash the public is cultish behavior. Chants and mantras at protests and rallies to reinforce false claims about the police and racial groups are also examples of cultish behavior. The woke employ gaslighting and repetition of lies in an effort to make others believe their bullshit. There's a glitch in the human psyche that allows us to believe things if they're repeated over and over again. In fact, some believe you only need to repeat a lie three times before it's actually believed to be true. So when the media lie about stuff like this over and over again, who can blame the general public for actually believing it? The media ran with this story saying that Adam Toledo was unarmed when shot by police. They went as far as placing a prosecutor on leave for suggesting he was armed at the time he was shot, which was true. He tossed it as he was turning around. But in this video breakdown, we see the whole story where he did in fact have a gun. It's not as cut and dry as I make it out to be here, but if you're truly interested in the breakdown of what happened, then watch this full video. The media is a straight up lying to the public, and it's effective because they keep repeating the lie, and the woke mob run with these lies, repeating them as well until the general public buy into their nonsense. Repetition of lies, repetition of slogans, and repetition of misinformation is mind-altering propaganda employed by the media that's fed to the woke mob cult. Number four, the leadership dictates sometimes in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. Now we've pretty much already covered this, but yes, the woke operates this way almost by definition. The woke must get permission to date, change jobs, or marry. They say if you're married to a Trump supporter, you should divorce them. The woke mob will prescribe what to wear, where to live, whether to have children and how to discipline children. We're seeing an influx of woke baby books. If you go to Barnes & Noble, you can find children's books on how to be an anti-racist baby and how to raise an empowered feminist baby. Because before you teach your kids that a doggy goes woof woof, you should teach them that they're genetically predisposed to be oppressed or to be the oppressive. Number five, the group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders, and its members. The group and or the leader is on a special mission to save humanity. Despite the recent polling data, which shows America is one of the least racist countries and that the standard income for black Americans has been steadily on the rise, the woke want to act like America is the worst place on earth for minorities to flourish. We've seen autonomous zones pop up in various cities trying to insulate themselves from the evils of capitalist America and the oppressive racist American justice system. Ooh. However, when these zones pop up, they quickly spiral into crime-ridden hellholes that collapse into itself just like their own flawed ideas. The woke want to save every aspect of the culture. The Oscars are too white. STEM fields aren't diverse enough. Climate change is viewed as a racial justice problem because it dictates who benefits from activities that produce planet warming gases and who suffers the consequences. It's terrifying stuff. Only the woke can save us from disparities in outcome. Is the STEM field disproportionately white and Asian? It's not because of individual choices and in what fields to major in while in college. It can only be systemic racism. To them, that is the only answer. The topic isn't a nuanced one. It is solely based on racism, the single cause fallacy. And they view themselves as superheroes to the rescue. The woke want to save us from everything because apparently everything is racist and must be torn down and rebuilt in their own vision. That's not cult thinking at all, is it? Number six, the group has a polarized us versus them mentality which may cause conflict with the wider society. I mean, is there conflict between the woke and the rest of society? I, mean, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't really noticed any of this pushback going on. The difference is that the right-wing media is willing to converse with those on the left. However, the left-wing media refuses to share a platform with anyone on the right. 
Furthermore, poll after poll shows most Americans don't want this woke culture in their lives. It's not that people don't support the notion of equality. The problem is the tactics by the woke left. It's like, I can sympathize with the mission held by PETA and Greenpeace, but not be into how they are going about achieving it. Two things can be true at the same time, people. We can all want equality and harmony, but we can also disagree with the philosophy and the data management behind it. If there's any group currently engaged in us versus them tactics, it is, without a doubt, the woke left. Number seven, the leader is not accountable to any authorities. Here's the thing. So far when I present one of these cult-like attributes, I know that an image immediately pops into your head. So when I say the leader is not accountable to any authorities in reference to the woke left, what do you immediately think of? Right, defund the police, or maybe a woman screaming, don't touch me, whenever a cop is going to arrest her. The image of CHOP, or is it CHAZ? Doesn't matter. The CHOP or CHAZ autonomous zone. Remind me again who wants to abolish the police. That's right, it's the left. There's no group more anti-police and anti-military than the left. They don't want police because they think they are above the law, perfect, pristine, and above reproach. Furthermore, on the Black Lives Matter website, they come out and say that they are not an organization subscribing to the nonprofit 501c3. This is because they don't want to be governed. Basically, they don't want a board of directors to tell them what they can and can't do with their money. I wonder why. Number eight, the group teaches or implies that its supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. Really, like doxing people? Like going into neighborhoods and demanding people give up their homes? Things like that? The Antifa Handbook specifically chronicles why violent confrontation should take place against those that oppose them. And yes, there is a handbook. The woke are the ones that have coined the phrase, silence is violence. We see the media prodding on violent protests in the streets with CNN promoting, tell me where it is a protest should be peaceful. Okay. We also see media and other woke officials defending stores being looted. We live in a time where the media can stand in front of a city on fire and have the lower third of the screen read fiery but mostly peaceful protests. The most despicable behavior is going on and it's all being defended by the woke mob. Churches, businesses, black owned businesses, charity centers are being burned down. People are being shot and killed. Police officers are being targeted and killed. Innocent people are being harassed in restaurants. Neighborhoods are being infiltrated and people are targeted within their own homes. Houses are being vandalized, all because the woke think they have the moral high ground. They think that they are above the law. They think preventing the dissemination of ideas outside of their own is violence. The only way to counter that information is to create violence of their own. To the woke, the ends justify the means that even admit to this. And that indeed is cultish behavior. Number nine, the leadership induces feelings of shame and or guilt in order to influence and control members. Often this is done through peer pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. Look, they have books dedicated to this, books like White Fragility and White Guilt, all right? In fact, it's actually called Woke Shaming. Even those that align themselves with the new left will get eaten by this cult if they don't adhere to every single tenet of their beliefs. We see J.K. Rowling, even to this day, getting mauled by the press and wokesters lambasting her over her scientifically held belief that a trans woman isn't a biological woman. That's her stance. When she came out with this belief, no one bothered to debate her on the facts. They pushed back with only feelings. The left and the woke refuse to accept facts, stats, and data. They operate primarily on emotion. Stop relying on statistics, they'll say. There are 50 million police-civilian interactions every single year. Out of that 50 million, there are 11 million arrests. Out of that 11 million arrests, 60,000 officers are assaulted. Out of all of that, 1,000 civilians are killed. 
Half of them are white, 250 of them were black. Almost all of them were resisting with the weapon or resisting violently. When you get down to unarmed black men being shot by white cops, you're talking about less than 4% of the total. And unarmed does not mean not dangerous. Michael Brown was unarmed, but he was reasonably perceived as dangerous. It is rare, Harvey, you guys are exaggerating this. When a white person gets killed by a cop, nobody gives a damn. When a black person gets killed by a cop, people are out in the streets. And in Philadelphia, you're talking about a city where the police, where the police, where the uh, captain of the city council is black. Almost every single member of city council is a Democrat. They have, they've had black mayors. The police chief is a black female. And you're still talking about systemic racism. It's ridiculous. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, really. You're making the country okay. worse. I, I, we actually, I'm making the country worse. Larry, I'm making the country worse. I just, I just I, want Larry, to be, I'm just, be very Larry. clear about something. Hold on, I'm hold on, Charles. I sleep just I am not ashamed of myself. And maybe you do too, and that's fine. So we're going to disagree on this. Maybe you should be. Maybe you should be, Larry. Because there is a the problem. On my side, the facts, there is the facts a are problem on my side. in this country, and side, you are Jim. relying on statistics, and you are not looking at humanity. It's called Larry. facts. It's called facts. It's when presented with actual evidence, the only recourse is to resort to anecdotal evidence. And when you don't agree with them, you get dogpiled. A horde of wokesters will attack your social media accounts and pile on you with sob stories and emotional appeals until you relent, just because you want it to stop. They don't aim to win you over by facts, but by their feelings alone. They don't want you on their side because if you agree and apologize, it won't be enough and they'll continue the onslaught. Whomever succumbs to woke shaming simply wants to rid themselves of the dogpiling and the public ridicule steeped upon them. And they'll chalk this up as a win. It's a keyboard victory. Congratulations, you bullied someone into relenting to your dogpiling barrage of emotional excess. You didn't actually change their opinion or make the world a better place. All you did was prove your cause as a nuisance. 10. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. This goes along with some of the other things I was saying earlier. The woke will tell you if your friends aren't woke and are conservative, then you should cut ties. If you're married to a, a Trump supporter, then get a divorce. If you are in a job where your boss doesn't come out on social media supporting BLM, then you should find another more woke job. If the business doesn't support the effort to repeal the new Georgia voting laws, then boycott them, right? Jason Momoa says, if you're a Trump supporter, then you should unfollow him. Many celebrities have also done this. Now, this is something that both sides do. It just comes down to the right being sick and tired of the left acting like know-it-all babysitters, and the left are sick and tired of the right acting like stuffy religious nuts. Now, who hasn't heard some story about people being deleted from social media contacts well, over political beliefs? Look, I'll delete someone from my social media accounts, but only if they're acting like an actual asshole. Someone has a different political belief than me, whatever, I don't care, I'm not your mother. We see people deleting family members, friends over political beliefs, and the overwhelming call to do so comes from the left or the leftist. But we see people deleting family members and friends over political beliefs, and the overwhelming call to do so comes from the leftists. You don't believe me? Well, there's a study that finds liberals are three times more likely than conservatives to unfriend on social media over politics. This just goes to show if you're on the side of the left, you're probably going to be cutting ties with anyone who doesn't agree with you. And along with everything else, if you're cutting ties with those that oppose you, you are probably in a cult. Probably. Number 11, the group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. Okay, who isn't though? So, whatever. Number 12, the group is preoccupied with making money. Okay, again, but who isn't? But it's the Black Lives Matter founder, Patrice Cullors, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who took money from her Marxist organization to buy a $1.4 million home in a predominantly white neighborhood. And if you share that information on Facebook, they will block it. It's Ibram X. Kennedy that was paid $20,000 for one speaking role at Fairfax County Public Schools. He's also paid over $300,000 in speaking fees. It's not bad for capitalists, I mean Marxist. White fragility, a race hustler, Robin D'Angelo also makes between $10,000 to $30,000 in speaking fees. ta Coates was paid more than $40,000 for a speaking engagement on top of ruining certain Marvel comics with his awful uninformed writing. 
This is all in the earned income in the name of woke ideology. It is truly amazing how much these anti-capitalists are able to make. What a humble, socialist life they live. As far as the woke organizations go, of course, you can donate to Black Lives Matter through their Democratic pay tunnel. That'll help colors and other BLM leaders afford bigger houses. Now, Susan Wood's nonprofit Solutions did an investigation into Black Lives Matter to see where the money is going, but she wasn't able to find anything. She found that the Black Lives Matter website generates millions of dollars, also at a 3.95% fee for making a transaction with them but it has no accountability of where the money is going or for what it's used for. There's a reason why you can't trace where the money is going with BLM when you look at the extravagant purchases being made by the founders. You can heed the clarion call of Kamala Harris and other woke celebrities by donating money to help rioters get out of jail via the Minnesota Freedom Fund. The MFF raised $35 million in the wake of the riots. But by early August, Minneapolis Fox 9 reported that the fund bailed out defendants from Twin Cities jails charged with murder, violent felonies, and sex crimes. Good job. The height of its popularity, it was raking in up to $100,000 a day by calling anyone racist for not going along with what they say and what they demand. They have been able to infiltrate publishing, streaming services, companies' human resources, and the culture at large. Woke culture can be found in every section of bookstores, in every genre of entertainment resources, in the classroom now, in the boardroom. It's everywhere, and they're holding up the Scarlet Letter brand against anyone who dares oppose them, making a fortune in the process. Money and power are at the center of woke culture because it is a cult and a strong one at that. 13. Members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize only with other group members. How many times has a conservative commentator or a conservative figure appeared on a talk show only to be ridiculed for simply appearing? Joe Rogan constantly gets a hard time for having conservatives on his show. This is coming from a show that has had Bernie Sanders and other well-known liberals on. But they go on to scream, how dare you give a voice to Ben Shapiro or Gavin McGinnis. Politico got criticism for having Ben Shapiro write part of their playbook newsletter. Daryl Davis, a black musician who has reformed over 200 Klansmen, is now being called an adherent to white supremacy because context doesn't matter anymore and no one bothers to look anything up. The left and the woke have a perception that certain people shouldn't be talked to. They don't want certain guest speakers at colleges. They don't want certain cable news stations carried by their cable provider. They want one view and one view only their own. If a left-leaning talk show has a right-leaning guest on the show, that show will immediately catch heat and even be called up for cancellation. Look at cable news sites. Tulsi Gabbard goes on Fox News and she catches shit for appearing on the network. The woke left are insular to the extent that they don't allow their own to even appear with those on the right. Because in their own words, it's given the right a platform. It's given the opposite opinion and that opposing view legitimacy. That's worth repeating. The left doesn't want the right to have a platform because it grants the right wing opinion a sense of legitimacy. That's a type of arrogance that is truly vile and disgusting. Only a narcissistic, self-centered brat thinks that way. They only want their own opinion heard because they are, in fact, a cult. 14. The most loyal members, the true believers, feel there can be no life outside the context of the group. They believe there is no other way to be and often fear reprisals to themselves or others if they leave or even consider leaving the group. Please tell me which side of the political spectrum currently engages in book burnings, digital book burnings, speech canceling, and business intimidation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's the left, really. There can be nothing else outside of what the group thinks. What happened when Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum formed the Blexit movement? What happened when black Americans like Larry Elder and Thomas Sowell voiced their opinions against the left? They're called the worst possible names for not following in line with how the woke thinks they should act. How dare they think for themselves, right? President Biden has even said, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. 
You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. This just goes to show how the left thinks black Americans should act. That in itself, that type of mentality, is one of the most racist types of thinking of all. By the way, just to reiterate here, Donald Trump is a racist because he called a virus that originated in China the Chinese virus. By the way, Chinese in this case refers to nationality or maybe in this case ethnicity, but not aimed at a race. But Joe Biden gets passed for declaring if a group of people that all have the same skin color don't vote for him, then that means their racial identity is not yet confirmed. Got it. Brendan Straka formed the Walk Away Movement to encourage others to leave the Democratic Party, a party he says has become too intolerant, and to join up with the Republicans. He's had to face the scrutiny of the left and had the Walk Away Facebook page, a page that was 500,000 supporters strong, removed from Facebook without really giving a reason. He's gone on to say that he has been denied service after being recognized from TV. When trying to buy a camera and mic from a store, the employee refused to serve him because he was alt-right, a popular tag used by the left to demonize anyone they simply don't agree with. Now, other conservatives have been denied service in certain situations as well. Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked to leave a restaurant for who she was. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen has been confronted in restaurants. Maxine Waters has caught flag for actually urging this behavior on. Brennan Straka isn't the only one to face constant scrutiny for leaving the left. Dave Rubin, formerly of the Young Turks, famously turned his back on the new left and became more of what is considered a classical liberal or libertarian. Of course, now all of his former friends at the Young Turks take every opportunity to denounce and demean him. Now, none of this is a definitive checklist if a specific group is a cult, but it is an analytical tool. It should be said that most people, including myself, agree with what the woke hope to achieve in their social justice stance. For the most part, they want to see equal representation, no mistreatment of people, equal rights, etc. But they also go far beyond that into the unreasonable and the unrealistic with insane tactics and over-the-top methods. The woke left has become this rabid beast. It's eaten up everything it initially wanted to eat up, and now it's looking for inedible things around, like wood and carpet. When the woke attack earrings, dreadlocks, Halloween, and math as being racist, you should probably question whether or not they've lost their collectivist mind. In regards to the validity of this woke cult, ask yourself these questions whenever you see the representatives speaking. What are their credentials? Are they credentials only within the group? What is the reputation of the mouthpiece of the group? What are the purposes of the group and are they realistic and testable? What accomplishments have been made? What about former members? How were they treated? What do they have to say about the group now? What is the process of filing a complaint? Is there a feedback mechanism? Are your questions answered directly? Are you told time and again to listen to your heart and not your head? Are you told that you are too new, too uninformed, too nosy, and so on, and shouldn't be asking such questions? Are you expected to take what's said on faith and criticize if you challenge that approach and ask for more? Must the leader's opinion be accepted without question? Is more than one point of view presented? Are other points of view recognized? Are other points of view seen as valid but different? Have there been any media reports about the leader or the group? Have you read them? Are they positive or negative? What is the group's comment about them? Is this woke cult sequestered, isolated, and what is the temperament of the group or the leader? Are there seeds of violence in the ideology or the language? Is there a history of arming selves or having an armed struggle as solution? Finally, has there been a history of government or police intervention? Hmm. Ask yourself all this stuff. When I was going through the list of characteristics of the cult, did a news stories pop into your head that corresponded to that trait? Did you immediately think of a news story on how the woke left corresponded to that cult characteristic? In that list, I just rattled off of questions to ask yourself when a woke talking head is rambling their dogma on TV or when woke ideology is being presented. Did you immediately come up with an example of your own? 
probably did. Of course you did. Because everything that should raise a red flag that you might be dealing with a cult corresponds with the woke left. Don't buy into their garbage and their tactics. Now, how do you fight back against this nonsense? First, rest assured that you are currently living in a country where a woman can walk down the street wearing a tank top. She can expose her face and not be forced to live in a bag like in some other countries. You can wear a Jewish star or a cross around your neck. You can wear a Slayer t-shirt if you want to. You can marry who you want and hold their hand in public without getting a second look. There are no gulags here. There's no caste system here. There's no social credit system here. There are no honor killings here. Currently, according to recent polls, we are living in one of the least racist nations on planet Earth. Pre-pandemic, there has been great economic growth and opportunities for all. In all respects, when it comes to race, we are on the five-yard line. However, the woke left will have you believe otherwise. So how do you fight back against the woke mob? Well, according to me, one, speak the truth in everything you do. Don't argue in hyperbole, but use facts, stats, and data to back up what you say. Cite your source and try not to use argumentative fallacies like the slippery slope or sweeping generalizations or the straw man arguments. The woke are not your friends. They will lie about you. They will not play fair. They will try to crush you into submission by dogpiling and name calling. The woke do not speak the truth and will use personal attacks and lies to silence you. Be brave and speak the truth no matter what. And two, never apologize to the mob. Apologies are viewed as an admission of guilt by the woke left, and they never accept apologies anyway. There's never been a time when someone apologized to the woke mob and came out okay. Apologies make no difference, but only stand to cast wrongdoing upon you. Never quit and never back down from what you know is right and moral. Three, use the law against them. If your spineless employer fires you for something you believe that has no reflection on your actual job performance, if it doesn't adversely affect the job as a whole, and if what you believe and say in private doesn't come back on your job, then they don't have a reason to fire you. Now this varies from state to state, however. One should always educate oneself on how their own state protects them in employment situations. Freedom of speech doesn't mean you can say whatever you want online. The First Amendment protects us from the government, not private companies. The government may not tell us what we can or can't say, but no such restriction applies to private employers. However, a handful of states protect employees from discipline based on their political beliefs and activities. Be careful with what you say and how you say it. That being said, if someone accuses you of being something you're not or accuses you of doing something you didn't do, and this adversely affects your life and employment, you have a case for defamation. Someone calling you a name online is what's considered a non-actionable opinion. However, if it's not true and it affects your livelihood, you may certainly have a case against them uh, for libel if it's written down or slander if it's been said. Now, in some cases, you won't be able to sue, but that doesn't mean you can't try. Now, of course, don't take my word on legal advice. I'm just saying that we should start suing the shit out of people. Four. Vote with your dollar. Every dollar you spend is a vote for the success of a company that you believe in. The same goes for every dollar that you withhold is a vote for the failure of a company you find abhorrent. Stop supporting woke universities and companies that perpetuate bullshit woke culture at the negative expense of others. Starve them. Cut off ties with them. They are certainly allowed to do business and to exist, but you don't have to fund their success. You have freedom of association, so only associate with those that don't actively proliferate evil. Let's be clear, these companies can do business however they want, but your money doesn't have to support them. Your dollar doesn't have to be a vote in their favor. For businesses you like, write them a good review, patronize them, and donate to them. For businesses whom you disagree with on their political grandstanding, tell them what you think and stop giving them your money. Stop saying, I'm going to stop going to Disney if they keep up with this woke nonsense. Just stop going to Disneyland and tell them that you've stopped going. Tell them that you're canceling Disney Plus, that you won't be buying their products. You won't be visiting their parks. I canceled Netflix over this whole cuties bullshit and I don't miss that garbage service for a second. Five, 
Vote in everything. Vote out the Democrats who support woke culture and want to change traditional American values. Vote for those who actually have the courage to stand up for what is right and what is moral. Six, learn how to say fuck you to these people. Learn how to say so what to these people. Learn how to say go fuck yourselves to these people. I think your dreadlocks are a little racist. Yeah, fuck you. Who gives a shit? Go fuck yourself. If you don't like this blog posting or the video, and I cordially invite you to also go fuck yourself.